Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome first in the role of Laura Purnell Walker. In the role of Alike Adupere Aduya. <laughs> and producer of the film, Nikisa Cooper. Let me start off with a couple of questions, if I can. The film made the journey from being a short film to being a feature. At what point did you all get involved and talk a little bit about that journey? Yeah, actually, Paras had a really interesting journey because it actually started as a feature film. So Dee Reese, the writer-director who couldn't be here, she's on the, on the West Coast, uh, she actually wrote the feature link strip script when she was interning on the set of Spike Lee's Inside Man. So in between, on breaks, she would write it, the script out longhand. Um, and so we couldn't make the feature at the time. We didn't have the resources. And so we made a short film, took the first act of the feature and made it a standalone. And that's what was on the circuit, uh, festival circuit 2007. Um, and then that got the attention of the Sundance Institute, and from there, um, once uh, they came to her and asked if she had a feature script, she was like, hell yeah, <laughs> dusted it off, and um, that's kind of how the story, story got started. Um, hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> I, I came on during the short in 2006, so audition, saw casting, um, an email, and I just sent my picture, hoping to be an extra and uh, I got called in to uh, come in for a leak A and uh, uh, begged my little brother to borrow clothes and came in and here we are, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um. All right, all right, okay, okay. <laughs> this is the story. At the time, I just came out of school. I had a headshot that looked like I should be on Top Model, which wasn't me. And um, I saw casting for the film through my school, Actor Studio Drama School, where I trained. And so I was like, I need to get in this project. The story is wonderful, like, for real. <laughs> so then I saw my headshot. I said, she is not going to let me be Laura <laughs> with this headshot. So I just poured my heart and soul in a really good cover letter, which she actually read. And then I just let her know how I related to Laura and where I came from and how I connected to Laura in that way. And she graciously invited me to audition. And that's where I met this talented young sister right here. And then we clicked. And after that, it was just the, the film was getting made. That's Six years later. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that impressed me so much when I first saw the film and impressed me again when I just saw it tonight is just how wonderfully natural the scenes are. I mean, all your work together just flows so beautifully. And I'm wondering, how did all of you and Dee, how were you able to achieve that? Did you do a lot of rehearsals? Was there improv? How much did you guys bring to the script? All that kind of stuff. I can, I can start <laughs> <laughs> speaking for Dee. Um, you know, she doesn't really believe in the traditional rehearsal process. Um, and so um, really, um, I'll just say quickly, you know, they didn't do traditional rehearsals. So, you know, what Dee had them do were exercises. Um, and so they would go out in character, and they'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, to different places, mm -hmm. talk more about that. Um, and to build, it was really for her about building the relationships, building that backstory, building shared experience. Um, and so they did some exercises. And one of the things that we did once everyone was together before shooting is not a traditional rehearsal, but a mock therapy session. Um, we had a psychotherapist friend that we brought in and everyone was, in, the family was in character. Um, and that was really, you know, how she helped build relationships. Yeah, so um, like Nikisa said, Dee doesn't do straight rehearsals where you like running lines by rote. And so um, one of the homework assignments that we had to do, she's good at creating really awesome creative assignments. And so Pernell and I had to go to a, a lesbian party in character, a lover girl party. Um, <laughs> so, somebody's giggling hard. Um, and 
that was a really inter interesting experience because where I kind of came to the film, what I when I first read the script, I immediately related to that feeling of not feeling free. And so, you know, when me and Pernell went to the club, it was like specifically we were like thrown in to this world and um, I definitely really got for the first time specifically the the isolation that um, Aliki feels being at this um, uh, this kind of club that you see in in the film and we went to Dave and Buster's uh, straight environment and character and, and just kind of sense what that was like and um, uh, D recommended I, I read um, Audre Lorde Zammy, so I read that, and I had a lot of conversations with D. She was very open. We just talked and talked and talked, and I asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions, um, and so we just kind of build, 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 on, um, and then um, and that kind of helped create um, this uh, feeling of this intense feeling of trust that allowed me as an actor to kind of just. Uh, be really open and vulnerable, um, which I thought was what you know um, needed to uh, to happen to uh, to play Lee Gay. So. And uh, just to piggyback, we did the exercises, observing, exploring different environments and character, and I felt like D was a brilliant uh, creator of memories because when you get to work with people on a cast or on a play, you you may not know them personally, but to create a, a line of memory in which each person has an experience with each other, either off the set with letter exercises where each character is writing to another one, having that dialogue constantly going. So the story is always ever living, is vibrant. That really helps to keep it fresh. Even if you read the script a million times, if you have that constant dialogue and that life going on, like, with me and my sister, what's going on with us, what's going on with the issues of me and my mother, what's going on with me and her. That whole friction is, is you don't have awkwardness on the set. And um, she's very trusting of us to do our work. And she kind of is hand, hands off, unless she feels like she needs to guide you in some way. But it's, it's very rare that she'll do that because she trusts her actors so much. And she has so much patience you know, to just allow you to go to places that are not easy to go to. And um, so I, I, I'm, I just feel really, I feel spoiled, <laughs> you know, to be able to work with people that they create an environment that's very welcoming and just for you to open yourself up to different possibilities that helps, you know. And they, they brought their amazing talent and perspective to the script, you know, and, and stuck pretty closely to the script. So there were a couple of scenes, like the dinner table scenes, where Dee would give sort of plant lines for improv. So, you know, you guys can talk more about that. But, like, each each character had a plant line that she'd given them. Like, Sharonda's plant line was, you know, are you, you, know, are you having sex at prom? And yeah. I'm having sex at prom. And then your plant line, you know. Yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of people um, you know, ask whether, you know, the script was improv, and it's a testament to, to Dee's writing. I mean, it it's pretty much 99.9% .9 on the page. And so we would run a scene, like maybe the dinner table, we'd run the scene on paper a couple of times, and then, you know, since we got it, she would, you know, just make it fresh by just throwing some plant lines. And so she would whisper in, you know, in depending on what scene, whisper in our ear, not telling the other characters. And so then we would say a line, and it just completely throw the other actors off, but they would, you know, still be in it. And so the, the dinner table is w was an example of that where, you know, Sharonda says something and, and then it's like, the parents are like, whoa. And then you, I mean, that's basically what you see on screen is, is, you know, Charles and Kim just kind of reacting to that and just keeping it going. And, um, uh, yeah, so it, as an actor, it's, it, it makes, it makes it fun and it makes it fresh and it's not just spinning out the same lines over and over and, you know, a, a director, sh D is an open director, and you can only be, um, and for her to allow, to kind of just trust, she has trust in the actors to just say, you know what, we're going to go off the page and let's just see what you guys, um, you know, have. And, I mean, as an actor, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, like one example of a plant line was like, when I had to go, well, pick up a leak gay, knock at the door, and the mom is opening the door to me, she, you know, she does let me in, right? So D on one take got in my ear and she was like, All right, so in this take, I want you to flirt with her. Yeah. I said, All right. 
So we did the take, and that door closed faster. Like, I never seen that. She was like, bow, right in my face. But it was very good, you know? You know, can you talk about the scene when you go see your mother? I think that's an amazing scene. I'm wondering how that developed. Okay. Um, okay, well, I got to say how I relate to the character first. And for me, I come from the South Bronx. So, you know, and these are people that I have grew up with from my old neighborhood. Like, serious, 163rd, 3rd Avenue, research, whatever. And so when I saw them, it's just like, oh my God, you're here. And it's, it's like total, like 360. It's like you see everybody making it in their own way. You know, where we grew up, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was some rough elements to grow up in. But when your family had a tight structure to it, you had some way to make it out. So me seeing you is just like, ah, oh, it's nice. So... With that background, I related to Laura in that way. And I had places in which I didn't fit in at times. I was very awkward. I was a huge tomboy playing football, whatever I wanted to do. And um, there, were, there are places within myself and my life experience where I was rejected. <coughs> Issues happened in the family. And you just really have to dig down, be specific with those experiences, and connect them with that scene. If you ever been loved by a parent or a family member and you had that love <coughs> taken away for whatever reason, it's gonna affect you. You just, you can't live without that. So what I felt like is I couldn't have Laura be Laura and not have a heart, not have a place where she is wounded, which is why she's uh, armoring herself with this hip hop swagger, because it comes from some place you know, and everybody hurts. So I just had to really dig down whatever was going on and comfortable with me, whatever experiences you have in your life is human. I had this one acting teacher tell me, the, the trash of your life is gonna be treasures on stage or film. <laughs> so I just, I, I, I'm just really appreciative of everybody being touched by that scene. And I just had to dig deep in whatever experiences I had and connect that with Laura in that moment. So It works. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Let's get some questions from <laughs> all of you. Yes, over there, man. Hi, how you doing? I'm Deepa Kelsey. Talk to you, Michelle. I wanted to ask all of you all, did you all, I'm reading the reviews, there's a lot of positive reviews. Did you all feel that you were in the Just going to repeat the question. Has there been any backlash against the film from the African American community or any community? I haven't, I haven't seen that. I've seen where they, it, it's opened eyes and created a, a, a very vivid dialogue with people where sometimes we don't talk about these issues in the black community or different communities, but when they see the simple connection of a parent and a child, you have so many children that are either committing suicide for not feeling wanted or so which kind of stresses or whatever, when they see that connection with the parent and a child, it, it kind of opens it up yeah. to that human bond that everybody wants to be loved. So, I mean, I haven't had any backlashes. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't felt any backlash. Um, and I think what's really great about this film is that nothing's black and white. You know, there's no character that's like a straight up um, broad archetype of like bad or villain or super good and, and I think many different people wherever you stand in your belief about you know whatever LGBT issues or just anything um, you can see yourself reflected in the screen and you can see all the the kind of like the back and forth and the struggle that either a parent or a teen or a friend anything anybody can you know goes through so I think I mean, at, we've done a lot of Q and A's throughout the country, and we've with all kinds of audiences, um, people from churches, and I mean, all colors. I mean, just all ages. And I mean, the one thing is that people are able to see themselves in one way, sh um, you know, in, in one way or another. And uh, it just it's opening, like Pernell said, it's just like opening awareness, and it's what's really been overwhelming, but an awesome way to see. And you know, personally, my mother, um, I'm Nigerian. My mother, she 
you know, after this film was at Sundance, she called me saying uh, people, at the time, people were being killed in Uganda for being gay. And she called me, like, in a, like, in a fit of expression and was like, you know, this film needs to come to Nigeria because, to Africa, because people are being killed and I don't know why. And for my mother to say something like that, she's 60 plus Nigerian woman who didn't really care, you know, to be honest, didn't really care about these issues because it was something that wasn't close to her at all. And I, at that moment, I thought, oh my God, if my mother can say something like that, I was like, anything is possible. And it's the power of film happening, you know, right before, you know, right before me. And so I think this film has a great opportunity to open up awareness and, and open up discussions and just talking with people. And it's just been really, really, really amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, she, she said it all. Yeah. <laughs> the questions. Yes, right here. Hi. Um, first of all, amazing performance, stellar writing. Um, and I wanted to ask you, do you think at some point this film will be used as an educational tool in the schools? Because um, obviously it is, it's, it goes beyond what is being taught. It's, it, goes, it goes beyond the social issues that are addressed in schools. And it's so important. And um, I think it would just make an amazing tool to use in schools. Will the film be used in schools, and are you preparing educational materials to go along with it, I guess I can add? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was sort of, uh, for D and I, we have a production company together, and this it really, this is all about the double bottom line for us. There, there's sort of the commercial side of things, but there's also, you know, the education piece of it. So with the short film even, we, we started to, to workshop. Um, so the short film's available on, on the educational market. We've worked with academics to pull together study materials to accompany the film, and that's exactly, you know, what we'd like to do with Focus and, and you know, once it's done as theatrical and, and other ancillary uh, markets, absolutely, because we definitely see it as a, a tool. You know, I think that these are some images and these are families and these are relationships that we haven't quite seen on the screen before and I think that there's such a huge huge opportunity for it to you know open a lot of doors and eyes and and also be used as a tool so absolutely thank you for your question yes over here y y it's, it's you great oh great hi <laughs> um, I just want to thank you all for your commitment to this project I think it's, it is a conversation that needs to be had especially in the black community and I wanted to um, ask I'm assuming that you, that you two, the primary actors, you aren't, um, you don't identify as LGBTQI. Mm -hmm. I'm straight. Straight? <laughs> straight. Straight. Um, so how have, what were your politics before this movie, and what, were, what are your politics after this movie? Do you have a, a deeper appreciation for the oppression that LGBTQI folks face within our own communities and families? Yeah, I mean, beforehand it was, you know, it was just open. Every, everything was cool, and I think, you know, living in New York, it's part of that. I never had any issues or whatever. And I think being in, doing this film, it just opened my awareness, like, very specifically. Like, especially, you know, when we did the short, we, I remember one of the things we had a, um, a teenager um, come in and talk to us about specifically her struggle. And so it was like, you get really, like, instead of, like, this kind of, like, broad wash, you get, like, a real inside, you know, like, what it's like to be a teenager um, in New York City uh, to maybe come out and maybe and I don't think at the time she was even out and so just it just opens the, it just it just opens it you know just wider and so for me that's that's kind of you know where I'm at and and um, yeah I, I hope that made sense <laughs> for me I've I've always been in theater so <laughs> I'm my own kind of particular creature myself. So I'm so used to meeting everyone, like taking them as they are and let them just be. I mean, I feel fortunate of having like a long like theater background where I'm used to everybody's just coming with green hair to rehearsal and you're like, okay, hey, that's a new change, you know. But it's just, you appreciate everybody's differences even more coming from theater because everybody has a place, you know. So for me, it wasn't really a thing about, yeah. you know, I just, 
And and I'll I'll just say as a lesbian identified woman, you know, I actually, you know, came to a deeper understanding of myself, you know, through this film and my family and my relationship with my parents and I you know will say that Dee did as well. You know, I we made the short film in two thousand six and I actually never showed it to my parents. You know, I I was raised Catholic, a military brat, you know, I came out to them when I was in grad school, but it was one of those things where, you know, they were like, you know, I, we love you but we don't agree with this, you know, and it was kinda like we never talked about it. You know, so I actually, you know, Know, they were really proud of the project and all of the all of the attention it was getting and it was one of those things where I was like wow do they really know you know there's a crazy song in the beginning and there's a dildo and there's all this stuff <laughs> um, and so you know before the film was coming out I was like I have to show it to them so this past Labor Day, literally, you know, this thing whole started, thing started in 2005. This past Labor Day, I asked Focus um, to send me a DVD so that I could take it home and show my parents. And, and Focus was like, no, we're going to rent a theater. So they rented a theater out like five miles from my parents' home. Um, the three of us sat in a theater. I was like seven <laughs> rows behind them, like <laughs> watching the back of their head, you know, waiting for them to get up and walk out at any moment, um, just sweating, you know, through every scene. Um, and, you know, they got up at the end and they were still sitting at the end and I was just like uh, just you know in a ball of craziness um, and when they when the credits rolled they got up my father was you know had tears in his eyes my mother hugged me and you know they were like you did a great job and you know we had the, one of the most robust conversations we had about family sexuality everything after it so you know I didn't have the courage to sit down and have that conversation with them like face to face but I could drag them into the movie <laughs> and and use that as a point of departure for these conversations so that's kind of what we're hoping you know across the board Take me one more. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about what it took to keep it together, you know, to make the movie? You said in 2005 the script was written, right? And now we're, now it's almost 2005. Can you take us through the determination it took to make it happen? <laughs> um, wow. Um, yeah, it took a lot. Um, <laughs> Um, really, you know, it started with Dee's vision, you know, it started with her vision and it really started with, um, you know, really buying into and of course relating to, you know, the story that she was trying to tell and knowing that uh, this is a story that needed to be told. Um, and I just stuck to, you know, it just has to get done. And, uh, you know, right away in the beginning, we took, um, you know, having the, the support of the Sundance Institute, having it go through all of the labs, you know, we were naive. You know, I thought, okay, I have all these laurels, you know, the Sundance laurels. I've got Tribeca Institute. Um, you know, I've got an MBA. D has an M MBA and an MFA. You know, we're, you know, buttoned up. We've got, I've got a business plan that I put together. We're, we're tight. So we go to the production companies and everybody's like, wow, the script is so great, you know, and you guys are great. You know, it's just, you know, it's black and gay. If it were just black or just gay, you know, then maybe we could see a warning investment. But, <laughs> you know, so right away we knew that, um, you know, we were going to have to finance this privately. So fortunately, there are amazing granting organizations out there. Uh, the Estrella Foundation, Center Reach, uh, the Gill Foundation, Frameline. You know, so those were our, you know, our first people that believed in not only us, but in telling the story. And they would give us grants. We also got money from the Sundance Institute. So that would help us, you know, keep moving forward. Um, and then I, you know, was on the trail of finding private equity, you know, finding individuals and, and companies that believed in us and in the story. So literally knocking on, you know, every door possible, you know, and, you know, I probably I have a list of like everybody that I wound up going to and I think it's about 500 people or so um, or entities yeah absolutely um, and it took nine yeses you know, so that determination that, you know, I was going to find the people or find enough resources to make it happen. And, and also knowing that it took a village to make this independent film. So in addition to looking for money, it was all about finding the right resources. My job is to procure resources, you know, so whether it be, you know, financial, human, physical. So it was all about, like, knowing how we wanted to make the film. Brad and Bradford Young, the cinematographer, who is amazing. Um, and Dee, this is our fourth project together. So we had been, you know, talking about this incessantly, and I knew exactly what they needed to get it done so I would go literally like the post-production house you know opened in New York like in 2008 you know I was there in April I was there in March with the entire team bringing them to meet you know all of their staff and telling them about the project 
telling them that I needed a crazy discount. So those are the types of things that, you know, I had to do to sort of pull pull all the pieces together. You know, that was my job. I wanted to create an environment for these guys to work in um, so that they can be artists and not worry about those resources. So I was running around like crazy trying to make it happen. Literally, we started shooting and we weren't fully financed. Nobody knew except for me and the accountant. And he would like come up to me every so often and be like, you know, we're X amount of dollars in the hole. <laughs> we're, you know, and w literally the financing to get the film in the can didn't come in until like a half an hour before we wrapped. And it was just, it was, it was nuts for me, but it was important that I bear, I bear that board, bear that burden because, you know, they had to work. And um, yeah, so I mean, it just takes determination and just never saying, you know, never giving up. I mean, it's one of the most basic things ever, but when you have such a beautifully written story, you have such talented people that you're working with, for me, it was easy to keep it moving. Well, we're all grateful to you for keeping it moving. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. I want to thank Lakeisha Dupere and Cornell very much for the film, and thank you all for coming. <laughs>